Hello, my name is Elaine Howard Eklund, and it's my honor to direct the Banyak Institute for the Study and Advancement of Religious Tolerance. More than 88% of the world's population identifies as religious. Research has found that religion brings meaning, purpose, and moral guidance to many people's lives, as well as a sense of community. But religion can also be divisive. While many of the world's faiths promote peace and mutual understanding, religion-related conflict and discrimination are on the rise in nearly every region of the world, including the West. The Banyak Institute at Rice University is a premier interdisciplinary research and scholarly institute that exists to understand the conditions that lead to religious pluralism and tolerance, as well as intolerance, conflict, and discrimination, and then help people apply these findings in their lives and in their communities. We gathered four religious leaders of major faith traditions to ask them what they have learned about the challenges and opportunities of religious diversity. As someone who grew up in Saudi Arabia, where basically we don't have religious diversity, I grew up only knowing Muslims. As a person who's educated in uh, theology and uh, comparative religion, I know a lot about other religions, but there is a big difference between what you read in the book, what you see in the news, and what you see in reality. You know, when you add the human aspect of it, uh, religious diversity becomes something very beautiful. We often forget that each religion has its own identities. The challenge, therefore, uh, is to be able to humble oneself, my particular person as a Christian, to one, get to understand my own faith tradition, what exactly is Christianity. Second challenge, to respect what the African traditional person, what the Muslim, what the Buddhist, what the Hindu takes to be sacred. I've got to humble myself to respect that, even if I don't believe in it. So for me, these are two challenges that we need to take very seriously. A city that has the size and diversity of ours means that there is room in Houston for every imaginable corner of the religious spectrum. Now that diversity brings with it a certain set of challenges, which is that uh, for every tiny religious organization and culture, we have the opportunity to retreat into our own corners and make ourselves isolated in our own religious cloisters. But our job as pluralists is to resist the urge to retreat into isolationism and instead embrace the full spectrum of religious life and cultures that are reflected in the complexion of our city. My experience has been as long as we listen to one another's story, we know where we come from, what, what values we hold. It's interesting how much more we hold in common than the differences. But it's a challenge just to get people at a table at a table to talk and to share those kinds of really important stories of what shaped you, what formed you. Understand as a United Methodist, you know, grace is our number one value. So how do you extend that grace, the love of neighbor to one another? And I think that's what you learn when you sit and actually listen, like, like really listen to one another. I believe that we can lead people uh, much better when we do that. The best way to avoid hating somebody is to get to know them a little bit better. In a city like ours, in a world like ours, where we have newfound access to different faiths, languages, foods, cultures, arts that we may not have known otherwise, we have unprecedented opportunities to get to know people who are different from us. And the better job that we do becoming acquainted with and becoming curious about other people in the world and other people in the community, the more tools we have in our toolbox to fortify ourselves against hatred and to strengthen our capacity for tolerance and compassion. I do believe that we complete one another. Uh, I do believe every community have, and every people of faith have, something to contribute and something to learn from. You are never safe until your neighbor is safe in a religiously diverse community or society, we can 
work together in the defense of the other person. We need to know where discrimination comes from. We need to see the causes behind it. Also, we need to understand the consequences of it. If we go that route, what that will lead to. We need to take very seriously and find solutions to the problem of ignorance. Ignorance has led in Nigeria to suspicion to hatred. People need to be well informed. Even those of us who are in the business of uh, peace building, a good number of us are not actually well informed. We're not trained. That's why we need institutions like Bonwick. A practitioner like myself, we don't have the time to do the deep, serious research and analyze and give us inferences. That's why we need a place like uh, this institute. So for me, it is a gift, and uh, I do hope that more of us will get to know about uh, uh, this Boniac Institute and uh, use the facilities that are made available. As faith leaders, maybe this research could help us and I, I'd love to say stop the harm, at least mitigate the harm that we do to one another when we have a greater understanding of who we are. Like every contemporary illness, the more sophisticated we get at becoming diagnosticians means that the better we can be at treating the illness. The better we understand what makes a person or a community or an idea susceptible to mutations and violence means that the better we can be at uh, developing ways of inoculating our communities and our population against hatred and bias and prejudice. I remember after 9-11, a lot of people got so scared, left the United States. For me as a, as a Muslim, would I feel that I've been often misunderstood, misrepresented? Yes. One of the reasons that we're not understood is because we don't go out there and we don't feel comfortable to talk about our religion and to identify ourselves. And I think a lot of it because of fear. My greatest concern about contemporary anti-Semitism is that anti-Semitism is much less threatening when it's restricted to the dark corners of the internet or the shadowy sections of, uh, of communities. I get nervous when I see the way that anti-Semitism is fed and legitimized and even encouraged by high-profile figures in politics or the media, the way that that flame is allowed to grow by being given oxygen by people with enormous social media platforms, resources, influence, and wealth, that anti-Semitism is no longer just the purview of the ignorant and the isolated. We're seeing anti-Semitism, like many other hatreds, flourish out and open and in the public. And this is a time that calls for good people to stand up and say in a very clear, loud voice that this is not who we are as Americans. I really believe the global nature of the world, not just even the church or faith, is really impacting us in ways that I don't really, I haven't experienced in my lifetime. My hope is actually in younger generations who are much more justice oriented than I was. My concern in that is that our current structures for how we develop people of faith, some of them are quite antiquated. I think religion's going to look a whole lot different in the future. And I'm an institutional, you know, religious person, right? I, I, uh, I work, I, my call is to a, this uh, institution, but my call is more than to the institution. My call is to transform the world. Fear is easy. It's so, so easy to make you fear something. Uh, but to make you love someone, uh, respect someone, that takes a lot of effort. But it pays off. There is, it's so beautiful to love one another. It's so beautiful to live in a society where there is true love and friendship between people. Uh, but it takes effort. I'm for debating. I'm for exchanging views. 
as long as we know in the end of the day that you know what, I can count on you, you take care of me. As our prophet said, uh, you will not be a true believer until you love for your neighbor what you love for yourself. And ironically, that concept exists in every scripture uh, before us as, as Muslims. Something that is common to just about every religious tradition is a teaching that we can't be satisfied only with self-interest and self-concern. Just about every religious scriptural tradition I'm aware of teaches us that spiritual growth has to include developing a sense of concern and empathy for the other. To develop that capacity for understanding and empathy is the thing that brings a religious community and a, and a world closer to redemption and unity. As my Islamic legal system professor used to say, it's late now, he would say, knowing is becoming. So when there is that understanding, we're able to live together with our differences. Despite challenges, the future of religious pluralism is promising. And the Banyak Institute is here and poised to advance research and greater understanding about how we can promote respect and tolerance. Through our work, we bring the challenges and opportunities of religious diversity into clearer focus for the sake of the common good. Thank you.